Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our class number three. And remember, this is uh, part of a series of movies that we are doing here in Cardano FX in order to show you the main uh, features of this application. So it's time to talk about objects. And objects inside 3D or inside Maya specifically are uh, a lot of different things. I'm not talking about only you know spheres, cubes, and shapes like that. We have a lot of different objects that we can manipulate and tweak in order to get uh, something different, something really cool in our images. So the first thing is, uh, obviously, I want to show you what we have here in our shelves. I have a tab called Polygons, and I have another one called Surfaces. And this one allows you to see a representation of different type of objects that you can create. Now, another thing that I want you to, to see is that we have one view called uh, and this, uh, remember, in, uh, where, where I show you the, the different views that we have, the third one from top to bottom calls my outliner. And here in the outliner, I can see the different type of objects that I am creating. And I can actually manipulate all these objects by uh, selecting them and then tweaking their properties. In this case, I am selecting the plane. In this plane, I created, um, remember, in class number two or, or one. I don't, I, I'm not pretty sure. But now, I, I don't see it inside my viewport. And if you have an object and all of a sudden disappears or, you know, it's somewhere else inside your workspace or your viewport, what you can do is actually select it from here and press the letter F for frame. And then you press F and automatically Maya is going to jump and it's going to show you that specific object that you are selecting inside the outliner. Now, as you can see, we have different type of objects. I can see my plane. But I, am, uh, I also have other objects like perspective camera, the top camera, the front, the side. I have the fault light set and another set for my object. And this, uh, all these are different type of objects. Obviously, the one that I can actually see right now is the plane only. Because that's what I'm talking about. Inside Maya, we have different type of, of objects that are going to give us a different uh, type of uh, behaviors or different we can do different things with these objects they are not only visible objects inside the the viewport now i'm going to take this object and i'm going to press the the key delete in my keyboard so that i can get rid of it and now i have an empty space okay a, an empty scene now i'm going to move again remember with uh, pressing alt and then moving with my cursor like this and I'm going to try to position that into the center one more time, just like that. And I'm going to create a new object. Now, I can create objects from these little guys here, from all these different kind of shapes that I have here. Some of them, you actually need an object uh, before uh, pressing this other type of objects or tools because not, I mean, this is uh, the polygons tab, but not all of them are objects that I can actually see inside my viewport. That's what I was talking about. So I can go and click on this little sphere inside the polygons tab. And when I press that, you're going to see that uh, inside my viewport, it says drag on the grid. Okay, so that means that I can click and then drag and that way I'm going to create this little sphere, all right? Now, why is it red? Well, that is because in the previous uh, movie, I changed the color of my shader. Now, remember how you can call your uh, attribute editor? Well, actually, what you can do is press Control A if you want to call it, instead of coming and pressing this little button here. You have that option too. So you, you can press that button and then it's going to call the attribute editor and then I can go for example to my initial shading group and then you can see that I have a surface material connected to it. I can press in this little triangle and then I can jump to that material and then I can click here and change the color to another, another, another type of color. All right. Now I'm doing this because obviously if you are not uh, watching this uh, uh, this uh, series of movies from the beginning you probably are like why your your sphere is red well that's why now what we're going to do is uh, change the behavior of how this object is uh, how we can create these objects because for example right now i had to drag in order to create it i'm going to select it and then i'm going to move it because you already know how to move your objects we discussed that in our session number two so i'm going to move it a little bit just like that and then I'm going to create a different object. But instead of coming to this area, I'm just going to go to my Create Shelf. I'm going to make sure that I am in Polygons, okay, here in this menu. I'm going to select Polygons, and then I'm going to go to Create. And one thing that I'm going to do right now is going to click in this uh, 
dotted line that I can see right here. I'm going to click right there and that is going to uh, allow me to take this window and position it anywhere in my in, in my window inside my monitor so that way I have access to all these different type of objects that I can use and that way I don't need to come back here and you know clicking and clicking and clicking so I have everything right here now I'm gonna go to polygon primitives first and then I can obviously select this option and then I can create a new window okay with all the primitives and now I'm gonna close the create one so that I can see the the polygon primitives that I can create now why are they called primitives well they're primitives because they are one type of object that exists inside the application I mean I am not tweaking uh, any of their parameters I am not creating these objects from scratch they exist as uh, a one unique object that I can take right away and I can start to uh, deform this object in order to create something different so the, the type of objects we have here are called spheres uh, well, we, have, we have a sphere, we have a cube, we have a cylinder we have a cone, we have a plane, torus, a prisma a pyramid, pipe, helix, etc, etc. Now the first one was the, the sphere and one thing that I want to do is now create a cube but now instead of just clicking because obviously I can click and that will uh, tell me okay drag the base on the grid and then pull for the height which means I have to click and then I, I will drag and that's gonna create the base of this cube and then after I finish I can release and then I can click and drag to the top or to the bottom and that way I can create the height of this cube alright and then I release and I have my cube now for a lot of people that works uh, fine but for me in my case I really don't like this feature because uh, when I want to create a, a cube I just uh, I want a cube and that's it I don't want to be dragging and clicking because obviously if you want to change the if you want to have a cube an exact cube with the same values in all, all the different sizes of your cube um, that's going to be a little bit tricky so there's a lot of options of how we can manipulate that but uh, in my case what I want to do is go to my create menu and then right here inside the polygons primitives I have one option called interactive creation I'm gonna uncheck this option because like I told you I don't want to create uh, I don't want to be creating my objects with the interaction option which means that if now I'm gonna move this cube if I click on cube for, in cube for example I'm gonna create a cube a perfect cube and that's it now I can move it I can click again and I can create another cube so I don't have to drag and you know dealing with all these uh, things that in my case kind of uh, slow me down so now if you want to remove objects just click drag select them and delete them just like that okay now another thing we can do is I can actually select the object that I want here in my for example in this window but instead of clicking on the name of this object I'm gonna click on the little square that appears on the other side of this uh, uh, window and if, for example if I click on this little square I'm gonna call the, poly the polygon cube options the polygon cube creation tab and actually I can change or specify the, the options that I want for this cube the, the width for example could be 1 or 5 then I can say I want it, uh, you know, probably only one in height and probably three in depth. Now I can specify even the divisions that I want, how many lines or how many divisions. For example, this sphere, as you can see, we have a lot of different divisions, di different lines. And I can do that with this object too. So I can say, well, let, let, let me make it five. Five, five, so that we can see all the different. Uh, all, all the cube is going to be the same uh, size in all its faces. But I'm going to increase the number of divisions. So I'm going to give it 10, 10, 10. All right, and then it's going to ask me for the axis, the direction that I want to use for this, uh, the creation of this object. In this case, because it's a cube, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to select uh, Y, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to move this, and then I, I can click on Apply. If I click on Apply, I'm going to create that cube but I'm going to still have my polygon cube options open and then I can move this object to the back and if, if I press create I'm going to create this object and then I'm going to close automatically this poly cube uh, option so I'm going to press create and there you go you can see this is actually an, an error of my uh, viewport or my uh, card but actually that, that option is gone so I have now 
these uh, two cubes exactly the same this one and this one and I have all these 10 divisions that I specified in my parameters option before I created them so I'm gonna select the not this one and then I'm gonna press delete all right now one cool thing about this is that I can actually change the behavior of this object after creation which means if I press control a I'm gonna call my attributes editor and inside this attributes editor I have different tabs the same thing I have my initial shading group I have my material in this case is the Lambert where I can come again and if I want I can change the color all right but uh, also I have three different tabs three different tabs that are really important for our primitives the first one is called the polycube 3 the polycube 3 is actually the base of my object and as you can see right now I have the polycube history where I can actually change the the size of my object but based uh, based on their parameters as primitives which means this is the initial state of this object I can go and change it to 2 2 2 for example and then change uh, its divisions by 1 1 1 if I want to okay and then I am reducing the amount of polygons that I have in this object but now the thing here is that um, I can later divide this but I'm not going to be using this uh, polycube in order to create divisions because that can lead into, in, into problems because obviously we're tweaking something and then all of a sudden we make more polygons that are existing before the modifications we're going to have uh, weird results and you know uh, probably right now it doesn't make a lot of sense but as you move on and uh, I mean I can come here and create a, a division I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna create um, some kind of division here I'm gonna press enter so I just make some uh, I created something different right inside this shape and now if I come to my polycube 3 and change the division number for example to I don't know 2 you can see that the shape is actually changing because this modification is coming before the modification that I did after all right and like I told you probably right now is not uh, is not making a lot of sense but um, that's what actually that means so the first thing to keep in mind is that you actually have to come I'm just gonna remove that operation the the main thing is that you have to come here to the polycube uh, option and then specify the basic parameters that you want for your op for your object and then later on you can come to the PQ and then you can start manipulating the object but I mean the P cube is just uh, something that is holding that object something that is holding all these parameters inside these other parameters and now before we jump into the P cube I want to show you the one that is in between these two which is called the P cube shape so now one more time we have polycube which is the, the uh, what creates the main base of your object then we have the P cube shape which actually contain, uh, contains a lot of attributes that we can tweak in order to have different objects for example I can come here to the smooth mesh and then I can click on this one uh, that says smooth mesh preview and I can make it look completely different but it still is my cube it's just that I'm tweaking their parameters for, this, uh, for smoothing purposes and that allows me to see something different but still if I remove it it's uh, a cube alright but you know what for now we are not going to be dealing with these objects so just to keep in mind I have this one which uh, I can actually come here and you know I'm going to call it cube base all right and then if you leave in space automatically my is going to fill it up with um, an underscore now the next one is going to be my I'm going to call this one cube attributes okay and just cube ATT and then the, the third one is gonna be my cube uh, holder I'm gonna call it like that so that you have an idea of what is uh, going on so the cube base allows me to create everything then I can alter their, their attributes from this one and then I have this one that allows me now to to move my object or scale it now obviously you can come to the cube and change the width or the height but here for example if I change it to 5 my object is gonna be five height but in my cube holder the scale is still one 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 because this is this is the the basic shape that I'm creating okay so now if I want I can come here and change that to 2.5 and I'm gonna 
uh, make it bigger or I can divide it instead of 1 it could be 0.5 and then I'm, I'm gonna make it uh, 2.5 because I have a, a base of 5 in this other area but it's the same thing all these parameters are the base and then whatever we do after that is gonna uh, be applied and uh, uh, you know after the, the first operations so let's move and I'm gonna show you something else I have this other object and this is one sphere I can come to the P, uh, polysphere which is gonna give me the number of divisions of this sphere same kind of behavior but it's not a cube obviously then I can change the divisions of this and I'm gonna get a different type of shape and with this one I can start creating I don't know uh, uh, a UFO or something like that using these parameters then I can go and select the different objects that I have here from my attributes and then we have the holder all right where I can change the values in, in object mode and like I told you we're gonna talk about different options and what are components and things like that and everything is gonna uh, just flow just uh, relax right now all right now this um, type of objects are polygons I'm gonna select them all clicking and dragging press delete and they're gone you can see my outliner is empty now uh, empty of polygon objects now we have the Taurus I, this is another type of object that we can use we have the prism uh, we have a helix another cool type of object that we can use and the same thing we go to the initial state and we can change how many uh, coils we want the height of this object and we have the width we have the radius and so on so you can create a lot of cool stuff with these basic shapes all right now this is uh, for polygons now I'm gonna close polygons and let's try something else I'm gonna go to the surfaces option and if I click in surfaces one more time I have to drag on the grid so I'm gonna go to create nerves primitives and then I'm gonna go to interactive creation one more time so I, I can deactivate that and now I'm just clicking and that will make me uh, it's, it's gonna create one sphere now look at the object here in the, in the, in the outliner you can see that this one says nerves, nerves sphere now if I go to my polygons and I create another sphere you can see that I have now here in my outliner one called nerves sphere and I have another one here called P sphere 1 so this one is made with uh, was made uh, using nerves and this one was made um, using polygons and we're gonna talk about polygons and nerves in the next movie but what I want you to see is that I'm just gonna delete the polygons one I'm gonna select this with my selection tool I'm gonna click and now I'm gonna go to my make nerve sphere one we have something similar but instead of having them uh, having them with the the names that we saw before we have these one called make nerves sphere and the same thing now I have the option of using this sweep start and then the sweep end which allows me to kind of cut this object then I have the radius where I can change its uh, size and everything and then obviously I have my attributes like I told you but they are a little bit different I don't see the, the option for uh, smoothing like in the other ones but as you can see we have components we have tessellation different options for different type of objects and then we have our holder the holder is almost in every single type of object because allows us to move them I, if I create a camera I can move it if I create a light I can move it and scale it and all these kind of things so basically that's the way uh, how we can create objects inside Maya if you want to create other type of object you can come here to the create menu and then you have for example uh, you can even create a major tool you can uh, create a construction plane uh, you can place an image for uh, an image uh, plane you can create points or curves and that way you can build other type of shapes kind of um, this curve is actually kind of uh, the same curve that you have here uh, inside this sphere but we're going to talk about these options in our next movie in our next session so for now i hope you have an idea of how you can create objects inside maya and remember please let me know if um, we are doing the right thing here if you have any questions please um, comment and we will try to answer remember we have um, all type of uh, training courses inside cardanofx.com and for now that's it thank you very much please like the video share it and uh, let us know what you think comment bye bye for now thank you very much